Hi there, my name is Paul Halliday, and in this video, we'll be looking at the Moon library. For now, let's just create a new file for index.html and an app.js. We'll open this up inside of Visual Studio Code, and I'm also going to run HTTP server on this current directory. This means we can open this up inside of the browser. And to start with, we can head over to index.html. Inside of here, I'm going to open up a new Emmet abbreviation for HTML5. We'll have the title that simply says moon. And inside of the body, what I want to do is create a new script. And that's going to point at unpackage. And this is a development build for Moon. When you want to use this in production, just get rid of the slash dist and slash moon.js. So that's how we add Moon to the project. What we can then do is create another script file and point that at app.js and that will be our application. Above the script files, I'm then going to create one div and that's going to have the ID of app. What this is going to do is allow Moon to mount itself to this element. We'll take a look at what that means in a second but let's head over to app.js first and create a new app and have that equal to a new moon. We can put the element to be hashtag app. And if we did this, nothing would happen at this point in time because nothing has happened apart from moon mounting itself to this div. What I want to do is to have a h1 and I want to display a title. So let's bind to what would be a title variable here. And in order to do that, we have to go over to our new moon and we have to add something called a data. Now data allows us to store what's known as data in our application and this is reactive. So that means anytime this changes, the DOM also is changed. So let's make a title and that will be equal to hello moon. When we save our file and we take a look inside of the browser, we then have hello moon. And that appears to us on screen because what is happening at this point is this mustache syntax here. This is actually interpolation binding. And what moon is doing is taking this variable and displaying the value of that here on screen inside of this H1. Anytime this data is updated, this will then be reflected inside of our application. So I can hear you saying right now, how do we change this data? Well, when we make this app is equal to a new moon, that gives us an instance of the new moon. So I hear you saying at this point, well, we can create a new moon and we can initialize some data such as title. How do we change that? And how do we see moon's reactivity? Well, what we need to do is because we have this constant app is equal to a new moon, we then have access to the app.set method. We need to target the data of title and we can give this a new title such as goodbye moon. And if we save that and we just refresh our browser, we can see that we have hello moon to start with, but then we get goodbye moon. And we could wrap this if we wanted to in something like a set timeout. And the set timeout would allow us to see that change after one second. So if we refresh, we can see hello moon and that turns into goodbye moon after one second. So we're then able to look at things like changing our data using app.set. How do we call a method? So if I wanted to call a method that then was to alert somebody. So for example, if we wanted to alert something like hello world, well, how would we do that? Of course, if we just hit the save button and we refresh our page, we do get hello world at this point, but maybe I want to click a button. Well, we could make a methods object and that methods object could have an alert user. And we could then alert the user saying, hello world. So how do we call that method? Well, we have a couple of ways of doing that. Let's firstly look by making something an index.html. We'll have a button. And then we'll look at these things in the future, but we can use what's known as directives. 
to hook into the click event. So we can have m dash on, we can use the colon for on click. And then when we have the click event, we can call our alert user function. I'm going to add the text of alert inside of the button and we'll refresh the page. When we hit alert, we then get our alert, which says hello world. So that's how we can hook into the M on directive for click. But also at the same time, how we can define a method. Now we can call the methods in another way. We can also use app.callMethods. And in here, we firstly want to determine the name of the method. So this would be alert user. And then afterwards, we would have an array with any parameters. So let's put a message as a parameter. And instead of saying hello world, let's alert that message. We can now put a different message such as moon is awesome. And when we hit save and refresh our page, we then get an alert saying moon is awesome. And that's because the method has been called from within our app.js. So why do we want to use this app.call method to actually call our methods instead of creating something like this? So if we had something like const alert user is equal to a new method that simply alerts Hello world. Why do we want to do that? Well, inside of our methods, we actually have access to this as a reference to the instance. So for example, this gives us then reference to our app instance in which instead of saying things like app.set, we can say this.set. So perhaps we want to display our hello moon message again instead of goodbye moon. Well, what I'm going to do is remove this alert user. I'm going to rename this alert user to instead be hello moon. We'll leave the message parameter for now and we'll say this dot set the title to be hello moon. So if you remember, initially, we have the title of Hello Moon, it then gets set to Goodbye Moon, and we're setting it back to Hello Moon. Let's call a method, Hello Moon, with no parameters. Let's refresh our page. We get Hello Moon, Goodbye Moon, and obviously because this is at a timeout, and obviously because the goodbye moon is in a timeout, let's also place this inside of a timeout. And we'll put that to be 1,500. So after 1 1.5 seconds, we want to call the hello moon method, which obviously sets the title to be hello moon once again. So if we save this and we refresh, we get hello moon, goodbye moon, and back to hello moon. So that's how we can access our instance and call a method. Albeit at this moment in time, we are certainly using some strange methods with set timeouts, but that's just simply for demonstration purposes. Now, what if we want to do things like conditional rendering? So in Angular, you might have seen something like ng if. In Vue, we have something like v if. Essentially, what we're doing is we're determining whether to show a message. So let's have a data object called show message and we'll make that equal to true. And I'm going to remove the set timeouts and stuff for now. And we'll have a message inside of our app instance that will be a h1. And this will be a hidden message. At this moment in time, it's not going to be very hidden because we're going to have an MF. And what we're going to do is give the show message here the parameter of our MF. So if we said show message, and I'm going to remove the alert button for now. 
But as you can see, we can then see this hidden message on screen. And that's because we're telling Moon, if this sure message is equal to true, then display this message. If sure message becomes false, our message no longer appears. And that's because Moon is conditionally determining at this point in time, whether that message is true or false. In a similar sense to before, we can make a new method named sure hidden message. And we can set the sure message to be true or even to be the reverse of its current value. And we can say app.call methods, the sure hidden message. And then if we made another button and we assigned the M dash on, so this is the M on directive that we're looking at. If the on click event fires and we want to show the hidden message, And at this point in time, we don't need this app.call method. And I've made a little mistake inside of our sure hidden message. This should actually be the bang this dot dollar data dot sure message. And what this is, is of course, the data object inside of our instance sure message. So if we save this and refresh our page, and if we then click sure message, you can see that our hidden message appears and then disappears. So this is becoming the opposite of whatever the previous value was. Let's have a look at some other directives and this could be loops. So if we, for example, had a list of names such as Paul, Kitty, Dave, and finally another one, this one would be Turi. So we have a list of four people and we want to display them on screen. How do we do that? Well, inside of our index.html, we can use something known as the M-4. So for example, we may have a UL and an LI. And if you've used Angular before or Vue before, it's similar to V4 and NG4. But instead we have an M-4. And in here, we want to define what we want to refer to each element inside of the array as. So name in names, because remember names is the name of our array. And then we want to bind to that name. So if we refresh the page, you can see that we then have Paul, Katie, Dave, and Terry all on screen because of M4. So that's essentially taking anything inside of that array and then displaying it on screen as many times as we want. If we wanted to, we could even add more items to this list inside of the developer console. We could use app.set and if you remember, app.set is the way we add things to our data objects. We could add things to the names array. We could add a comma to then add a parameter. We would have the current array, which would be an app dollar data dot names. And if we use three dots, that will take each person inside of the array and allow us to then add a comma afterwards to add a new person such as Sarah. So that essentially creates a new array concatenates the old data with our new data. As you can see, we then have Sarah appear on screen. If we refresh the page, that person disappears. Let's go back over to our app.js and let's consider how we might make a custom component. So a custom component can be done with moon.component. Let's make a name for this. And this will be a hello component, which will simply display the word hello. It's quite a simple one. And we can then add a comma, a new JavaScript object. And inside of here, we can define things like a template. A template at this point in time, will simply have a paragraph tag or even a H1. And it will only say hello. So a very simple component. 
And that component can then be shown on screen. I'm going to put it underneath the UL and LI with a hello tag. So let's write hello like that. And if we refresh our page, we then have hello on screen. So already I can see you thinking about how this can be used. We can then take features inside of our app instance and we can separate these things out into their own component. So how can we add things like property types? Well, inside of our app.js, we can define some props. Let's define a name prop and that will allow us to say hello to a particular name. So let's say hello and we'll use interpolation binding inside of our component to say hello to that name. We'll put a name in our initial app instance of Paul. And then inside of our index.html, all we need to do now is say hello name equals and we'll bind to name. And if you remember that it says Paul in our app instance. And once we refresh this, we then see hello Paul. How then can we determine when the component itself wants to emit some data? Let's head back over to our component and remember a component can have things like data, it can have methods, it can have basically anything that a standard moon instance can have. But let's make it so that if we click a button, so instead of a H1, we'll have a button. And that button will have the hello name text like before. But this time when we use the M on click, so when this button is clicked, we'll fire a method inside of our component, which will be alert user. And the alert user method will not have any data or any parameters. All it will do is emit alert user. So it's simply going to emit alert user. What we can then do is hook into that by adding an m dash on alert user and passing this to a function inside of our app instance. So if we make a new function, we'll call it the same thing, alert user, and we alert hello, and that will just simply alert hello on screen. We don't have to have the same function name here as the name of our alert. Before we test this on the browser, I do want to say one thing, and is that data does need to return a method when we make a new component. Just have a couple of fixes here. I'm going to remove the data at this point because it is completely empty, but do keep that in mind. You will need to make that a function if you are going to use data inside of the component. And of course, for our methods, what this is then doing is emitting the alert user method. And I've made this entirely lowercase and I've matched the lowercase inside of our index.html. So what then happens is we are seeing M on for alert user. That's simply matching for the alert user emitted event. We're then calling alert user at this point, And then the alert user itself is just simply displaying hello. And of course, that's inside of our app instance. So when we refresh and we select hello, Paul, that will then display hello on screen. So just keep in mind when we're communicating between our app instance and our component, we want to use M on on the component itself, pass in the emitted event name. Then on the right hand side, we want to pass in a function that we want to call and that's inside of the app instance. And we do a similar thing inside of our component, but this time we use M on click and it's here we emit the event using this.emit. So that about wraps up a lot of the basics of Moon. We're able to make different things like components. We're able to add properties, emit events, look at things like data, methods, calling them methods, as well as directives here inside of our index.html and much more. If you'd like to see more projects with Moon, 
let me know inside of the comment section below. If you'd like to stay updated for more content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And of course, check out paulhalliday.io. And in there, you'll see different courses such as my free Ionic 3 and Firebase course, my new Angular course, and much more. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you soon in the next video.